Good evening everyone, this is Sam. For today's video, I'm not going to be talking about the economy, but instead I am going to be playing the actual game. For the people who are new to this channel, or even for people who've been there for a longer time but didn't realize that was the case, I am a ranger main. I have been playing ranger for a few years, mostly as a condition ranger, and then onwards to playing druid. Right now, I'm going to be talking about the balance patch and the changes it has had on Condi Ranger. So first of all, it would be good to remind people of what the patch has mostly done. The main impacts of it were that the consumables were nerfed. On Condi Ranger, this has quite the impact. The inherent issue with the class was that we did not have any trait that changed the value of condition duration. That meant that unlike some classes who have 33% more duration while wielding a specific weapon or an inherent this condition lasts longer trait, we were mostly relying on gear, which was both the armor set, the weapon set, the trinkets, runes, sigils, and then also on the food. That is the part that got nerfed. Instead of having 30% condition duration stemming directly from our consumables, we now have about 10%. This is something really important that must be taken into account when trying to make a new condition ranger build. Now, if you were paying attention to our subreddit, it has been advertised that condition ranger would still be able to somewhat survive by using a smoldering and an agony sigil. While this is partly true, it is not the most optimal set, at least from my testing. I will be revealing to you guys what I think is the best set for Ranger, and still comment on the one that was proposed on the subreddit. So first of all, I guess we're gonna have a look at the traits. Right now, Condition Ranger has gotten one gift from the patch, and this has been Taste for Danger. Now, we have a gain in Vitality, which is completely useless because it's not like we're gonna get hit anyways. But the vitality is now converted to expertise on a 7 person basis. This is particularly important to us because this is the first trait that we have that has given us actual condition duration. It is not much, we're getting about 80 expertise all in all. So that means we're not getting much in condition duration because expertise has to be divided by 15 to give an actual condition duration percent. But it is still something. Then onwards to the traits. Ambidex tree has not really been changed. We're getting the same condition damage buff as before. We're getting the same reduced recharge. Then poison master. We have the increase on poison damage. That is particularly good. And it is also the reason as to why I have decided personally that for this build, instead of going for the Agony and Smoldering split, I will be trying to make something work with Malice, because I want to get that poison duration as high as I can possibly get it. It is value. Then the same old Sharpened Edge. Bleed on crit, no ICD, very solid. Hidden boss for more bleeding damage, and quick draw. We're still going to be using exactly the same rotation as before, nothing has changed for us at least on that end. Usual Beast Mastery, the boon copy to pet is going to be particularly useful. This trait in itself is not particularly important, but well, it's not like the others are even better. Natural healing, pets are going to be a bit more resilient, not particularly interesting either. The only encounter in which your pet can possibly die should be Veil Guardian. Other than that, normally it should never die. Honed Axes, that's also the good old trait. We're getting a ferocity increase, that doesn't have much of an importance to us. However, due to the fact that we finally have the damage increase on the Axe 3 skill that was brought to us from PvP, it might actually hold a little bit of value, but not that much. And the Recharge Reduce, that's also pretty alright. That is part of what makes the rotation this fluid. Because Condition Ranger Rotation is one of the rotations that, despite its simplicity, actually has one of the best feelings. It is still one of the most fluid in the game. So now, let's have a look at the utilities. So, we heal as one, 
You will want to use that whenever you're not actually using any of the important priority skills. Transfers the boons you have to your pet. It is particularly interesting in the case of Might, because you will want your pet to have more damage as it attacks. Especially on the condition end, because you're going to be playing with the Lynx, and the Lynx has very solid condition damage on the F2. Sharpened Stoned, the usual. You want to precast that one. I'm going to be talking about the precast as part of the rotation, but you want that one to be precast whenever you're going to enter a raid encounter. Then Viper's Nest and Flame Trap, the two traps that have the highest damage, and Entangle. I am playing on a human male ranger. This means that I do not have access to the racial skills that were actually pretty good, either before or now still. Said racial skills were first the Seed Turret, and now it has moved on to being the Fern Hound. But we are not going to be using either of these, and we're going to be using Entangle. So that means that the DPS I will be getting is technically the least you can get out of all the races. But it is, does not have that much importance, as I don't think many people are going to be actually remaking a ranger to another race just to be able to keep playing it. Now, as we move back to the hero panel, we're going to have a look at the gear. This is going to be full Viper. I have no better idea for a split, I did a lot of math in Excel. This is what is possibly the best. So we're going to go four runes of the Nightmare, two runes of the Trapper, and well, malign infusions. I'm going to be using full infusions on this video, so yes, if you do not have any infusions, you'd be benching under 30k. I'm sorry for you. That's just the truth. The hard one. Malice and Geomancy. That's the split I decided to go for. The reason behind it is that I consider myself to be rather proficient at Condition Ranger, and I believe that if you've got the rotation down, the thing that matters the most to you is going to be able to stack as many conditions as possible. Thus, having the super procedure of Geomancy is more interesting, and the poison duration that Malice brings over Agni and Smoldering also has value. So all in all, you would want to use that split and not another. For the trinkets, everything is Viper. No surprise over there, we are using the line infusions as well. There is nothing better we could be going for right now. If you have anything else that you think is a better idea, you're free to discuss it in the comment section, but I don't exactly think you can find a better split. The other split that I was working on was a split using Agony and Small Rain Sigil. It is actually quite solid as well. It is just not as good. The thing with the um, Agony and Small Ring is that you're going to be losing out on the poison duration, and as we saw beforehand, poison has a damage increase. It's actually valuable to go for that poison duration. If you are less proficient at the rotation, using that extra condition duration on the most damaging ones would be rather useful to you. So if you're still learning the condition ranger rotation, or if you feel like you just want a class that is a no-brainer for raiding to the fullest. You might want to go for Agony on Smoldering. Really, you can and will apply less conditions, but they will last a little bit longer, which means that you have more room for practical errors and mistakes in the rotation. For this one, you will want to more or less do it exactly as it is shown, because if you make a little bit of mistakes, you're going to be losing out on a lot of damage. I guess now we've gone pretty much over everything that was related to uh, the gear, traits, and everything else. We're going to be talking about the food. So you're going to be wanting to use the rare veggie pizzas, 100 expertise and 70 condition damage. It is still the best in slot food for condition classes. Like the price dropped on the trading post, but it is actually still worth it. And you will want to use that. Same, Furious Tuning Crystal. Then condition damage equal to 3% of precision and expertise to 3% of the precision. This is also very useful and you will want to have that one as well. It is rather expensive to craft, but we might see some adjustments to it later on. So we're going to be using the Ravage pieces and the first turning crystal. As you can see, I am at 92.33. This is about 5% less condition duration as we had on previous condition on Damage Ranger. So we're losing out on the Earth Sigil and 5% condition duration, so to speak, from one build to the next. This is quite an issue, but it is nothing that you cannot beat by practice. Now I'm going to do an example of rotation. Hopefully I am not going to 
fuck it up too much because I'm not gonna do any other take of it. I want to keep it as true as possible. So let's go for it. So as I said before, you want to precast the Chabrining Stone. In each and every encounter, you will want to precast that. The other thing you will want to precast is the Crippling Shot. It gives three attacks inflicting bleeding to your pets. You want to cast it at around 12, 12 second mark. As you could see, we've been having a pretty hefty nerf to Condition Damage Ranger. We're at about 30.4k, more or less, if I take the highest numbers that I have shown there. And that is a huge difference from before. QT used to have listed on their website a 33.9k realistic buff rotation. Realistic buff that I am using right now. So this means that I am about 3.5k below the old QT rotation and about 4 to 5k under my usual rotations. This is rather disheartening and is a proof of the nerf that has befallen on Ranger. But it is nothing that you cannot beat by practice, as I have just said. That rotation was not perfect, it was just solid. And you can definitely pull out 27 to 28k in a raid run if you pay attention to what you're doing and actually focus on your rotation itself. Also, you might want to realize the fact that you will get a little bit higher damage if you are cleaving because your bonfire still is present in the rotation. I strongly believe that this is the best you could be going for if you intend to keep playing Condition Ranger, and it is not that bad all in all. If we look at Druid, the same nerf must have hit it, which means that power and condition are almost on par with each other in actual raiding conditions. This allows you to try more and more variety in the builds you will be playing, and if you are going to be playing some specific wings in which power is more prevalent than condition builds, you will want to actually run power, zerker, or going to major life for healing. I think that this concludes the video right now. If you have any questions, you're free to ask them in the comment section or to go onwards to our Discord and ask them directly to me. If you're curious in the other splits I was thinking about, I can release the spreadsheet in which I have discussed them on Discord. Finally, I wish every single one of you not to cry too much because your favorite class just got nerfed and just to keep practicing your irritations.